What is going on with y'all, man? It is Black Balloon. And I'm coming back with another video. So y'all already know what's going on. All right, y'all, I'm feeling good. I am blessed. I'm blessed to be here. I'm blessed to be coming back with another video for y'all. We got another video, y'all. And we got a we got a good video. We got a real good video. Now, the last video we did, we did the Friday cast, the curse of Friday and the cast members that have died from Friday. If you're watching this video and you haven't seen that video, go back and watch that before you watch this one. Now, they don't tie together, but, you know, we're on, you know, we on that wave right now. So, as y'all can see by the screen, we got Lamont Bentley right here and we got Brandy. Now, this is the time perfect time to talk about the Moesha curse as labeled by fans you know over the years after Moesha stopped airing on regular TV the 90s sitcom also has a couple of people that died that were like the main stars of that show now, two of the people we're going to cover, they also played in Friday. So I guess you could kind of say this does relate a little bit. But now I had a couple of people request me to do um, Merlin Santana. And when I started looking up his death, I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I didn't know Lamont Bentley died. These are shows I was a little kid. You know, it, I, I say this all the time. It's like people on, on TV, it's like you find out years later that they died on some shit. I didn't even know he's, he, he died. It's 2023. The man died in 2005. I had no idea. I thought this dude was somewhere still alive, old by now, still doing, still kicking. He died a long time ago. And it's just crazy sometimes to find out that these stars from these shows are dead, you know? It's this Hollywood stuff, bro. This Hollywood stuff. So... You know, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. But like I was saying, I had a couple requests to do Santana, right? Merlin Santana that played on the Cosby show. He also played on Moesha and a bunch of other stuff as well. So as I was looking him up, I came across, you know, the Moesha curse. I came across Lamont Bentley. And I'm like, oh, man, wait a minute. I'm glad I didn't go ahead and just do a video about Merlin Santana, you know, because we'll get a hint um, into the official story of his death. We'll also get into the official story of Lamont Bentley's death and, you know, others from the show. Tying all of this stuff together, it, it just really shows that, you know what, this this really might have been a curse. Some of these people really might have had spells put on them, you know, or, or they just might have just straight up been ritual sacrifices. Because it's kind of crazy to see how these people died, you know, and I got something from one of... Merlin Santana's friends I think he was like a comedian I think uh, it was a white guy I just want to you know I want to throw that clip in here and play it because he kind of gives us you know although Merlin Santana didn't die the way that he you know portrayed in a show or anything like that but his death was along the lines of life imitating art you know when, when I play the clip you'll kind of see what I'm saying and Actually, let's just check this out. To be honest with you, I was not 100% surprised okay. when I heard Merlin had passed away. The way that or, passed. or, no, that he had passed, or the, or the fashion, or the circumstances. I was not surprised. I'm, I'm just, Merlin lived a, Merlin was a wild dude. Mm -hmm. He was super talented, but he was wild. And he was not, you couldn't tell him what to do. You couldn't tell him where to go. He wasn't afraid of anyone or anything to, to a fault, you know, got him killed at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. yeah. To the point where, I mean, I love Merlin, but, and we were, we were, we were so close. That relationship that you saw on camera was absolutely authentic. If, if I, if it wasn't for my wife, I probably would have spent a lot more time hanging out with Merlin. And my wife loved Merlin and Merlin loved my wife. But my wife's like, you're not hanging out with him. <laughs> it's like, you can't, no. <laughs> she wouldn't let me. Um, I mean, Merlin was, you know. What do you think he would have been doing now? I kind of always saw Merlin as being, like, he would have been a, this massive crossover star. 
He was an incredible reggaeton, like rapper. At the time, that music was very popular. And he was cutting an album with Big Pun at the time. I mean, I'm, I'm aging, I'm dating myself at this time. But, but these guys were recording albums together. I mean, and he was really, normally I'd be like, Merle, this is horrible. <laughs> but it was good, he was really talented. And he was like, yoked and like, he was good with like, you know, he, he could have probably been like a rapping action. So, you know, I mean, what would have stopped him, right? I mean, he could have been like a mix between like a Will Smith and like a, you know, you think um, Ice Cube, you know, he does all the movies and stuff, you know. What was happening in his career when you transitioned? He was starting to do film. Yeah. Yep. I mean, oh yeah, dude, Merlin was going to go. The only problem with Merlin was people were, you know, a little bit put off with how wild Merlin was. They, you say they knew. Wild, is that like in terms of? You didn't know what time he was coming home. You didn't know who he was going to get into a fight with. You just didn't, you know, just a, he, you couldn't tell him what to do, where to go. I mean, I don't think I'm, I'm not saying anything that anybody that knows Merlin wouldn't agree with me. I guarantee you Terry would say the same, everybody, they would all say the same thing. And I loved him like a brother, but he ran, he was fast, man. He was, I mean, look up the details of his, his passing. It's, it's like something out of, you know, like a, like a film. Yeah. Something that would happen in a movie. He said he wasn't surprised Merlin Santana died. You know, he wasn't 100% surprised about it because the guy lived a wild life. Underneath the surface, he was a wild boy is what he was saying. You know, one of those kind of dudes, nobody could tell him nothing. You know, everybody knew what kind of person he was. So he kind of put it as, you know, he just... It wasn't a surprise that he died the way that he did. But then he also mentioned that his death was something like a movie. It was something that doesn't happen to people like Merlin Santana. They did go on to agree that, you know, it does happen in real life. Things like that, you know, it does happen. But to someone like Merlin Santana, it just doesn't happen to people like him. And that his death was really like something you would see in a movie. That's how random it was. You see, it's like the way that he was saying it, it kind of, you know, gives us that life imitating art thing because it's like it was very random. And a lot of people, a lot of people was like, wait, you know, this just doesn't really make sense the way that he died. You know, and if I'm not mistaken, I think I read something from. You know, I was I was searching, I was searching like deep, trying to really find some extra stuff about him. And I'm not sure if he was dating um, Corinne Stephan, the girl that had the book, you know, that wrote the tell all book of like confessions of a video vixen or something like that. Supposedly, there was a section in that book about Merlin Santana and that, you know, he felt like he was being followed or something like that when the person was explaining it. You know, they were saying something about how he felt like he was being followed or spiritually felt like, you know, something was chasing him or something like that. It was something weird, you know, and I think it's in a book um, of, you know, confessions of a video vixen. Real quick, we'll read the official narrative of how he died. It says a teenage girl was found guilty. Now, mind you, this girl was 15 years old and she lied about her age. A teenage girl was found guilty Tuesday of helping two men kill popular young actor Merlin Santana making a clean sweep for prosecutors who earlier won convictions against her two co-defendants. Monique King lied to her two accomplices by saying the actor had made sexual advances toward her. She also helped them get away after they shot Santana. Prosecutors had sought a first-degree murder charge against King, 17, in the connection with the November 9, 2002 shooting, which took place shortly after the actor left another man's home in the Crenshaw District of Los Angeles. Santana, just 26 years old of North Hollywood, was best known for his role as Romeo Santana on The Steve Harvey Show. Fiddler, trying the case without a jury, found King guilty of second-degree murder and attempted murder. He acquitted King on two lesser charges. King, a runaway who was 15 at the time of her arrest, is scheduled to be sentenced April 20th. Prosecutors who tried her as an adult agreed that King would be sentenced to the California Youth Authority and held into age 25. Now, the thing about this to me, you know, it says prosecutor said that Santana and a friend had been at a nearby home with King the night of the murder. King left, then later returned outside the residence with bonds and gates. 
King told the men that Santana and his friend had made sexual advances toward her. Santana and his friend were about to leave when one of the men shot him in the head as he sat in the passenger seat of the car. The friend drove off and flagged down a police car. Santana died at the scene. The thing about this is to me, it just doesn't really make sense. And it seems very random. So, you know, we could go back to say how the guy said he lived a very wild life. You know, obviously the girl might have looked older, might have said she was 18. He was 26. Cool. He'll go with it. Maybe, you know, he was messing with her truthfully. Maybe that's really what it was. But for a girl that's willing to lie about her age. To mess with a grown man. And then claim to two guys that she was, you know, touched or a guy made sexual advances toward her that she didn't like. To claim that seems very odd to me. So that didn't really make sense. Now, although I couldn't find any any kind of backstory to what was actually going on, why they were together, you know, I couldn't find any of that. But in my mind, it just it seems like a setup. It seems a little deeper than a setup. It seems like this was planned all alone and this was a sacrifice of Merlin Santana. Just by who? You know, could his death had just been a part of that Moesha curse, and it was something that he had coming. Was this that Hollywood oath, that Holly weird oath? Was this a sacrifice for Steve Harvey? You know, we just, in his case, we just never really know. But the story just doesn't really add up to me because there's no, there's no backstory to it. You know, why was he with the girl in the first place? Why would she tell two random dudes? I don't know if that was her brothers or something like that. Why would she just tell two random dudes, yo, this guy tried to touch me and do this and do that. And boom, they shoot him in the head. They don't just beat him up. Because maybe she told, you know, the guys that he raped her, you know, but why would they shoot him in the head? Why wouldn't they just jump him, just beat him up? It doesn't make sense. And, and when it's somebody like this that's heavily involved in Hollywood and, you know, TV sitcoms, you know, famous actors, we already know what's going on here. This ain't no... You know, this ain't no natural death. This is that oath. This is what happens, you know, when you join Holly Weird, you know, to live and die in L.A. <laughs> That's what it is. Cause he was from New York. Just as I always say, they always from somewhere else. They never be like from L.A., grew up in L.A., got famous in L.A. and, you know, died in L.A. It's always like they, they pull them from somewhere else. They move to L.A., live in L.A., die in L.A., you know, at a very young age as well. But from here, let's um let's go ahead and move into the Moesha curse and get into the other deaths of actors and actresses that played on the 90s sitcom. All right, y'all. So moving on to talking about the Moesha curse, right? Y'all always know I got to find an article to pull up for us to read from so we can get accurate information of the people that have since died from the 90s TV sitcom Moesha, right? And before I really go into this, we all know there was stuff surrounded around Moesha with the whole Whitney Houston thing. So none of this stuff is far-fetched. Remember the most famous clip from Whitney Houston and Moesha was when Whitney Houston handed Moesha some kind of note. And Whitney Houston was like, damn near, she looked like she was soaking wet. Some people say she had just got out the pool or, you know, some people took it as far as that. They just tried to drown her and kill her right then and there. She had interrupted, you know, them on set. It was her, Clive Davis and um, old girl. And you know, I guess they was about to do some kind of little interview or, you know, whatever they were about to do. But Whitney Houston felt that she needed to interrupt that and hand Brandy some kind of note. Now, Brandy gave her that look like. Uh, why is she doing this? Why are you giving me this note? I'm not on your side. That's the exact look that Brandy gave her. It was the kind of thing where someone thought you was real with them. They on your side. It's someone that you think you can confide in and talk to. That's why she gave her that note. Now, whether or not Whitney Houston knew that she wasn't on her side and she still wanted to warn Brandy about something, because that's one of the most, you know, it's one of the biggest mysteries of this whole, you know, iceberg of, you know, industry, conspiracy, whatever you want to call it. It's one of the biggest mysteries. What was on that note? But Brandy face and body language told me everything I needed to know. She was already gone. She was with Clive Davis. You know, she wasn't worrying about no Whitney Houston. She looked at her just the way anybody else who didn't know Whitney Houston, nor knew anything about the industry, looked at her. You know what I'm saying? Um, 
so gone. She, you know, she not on the Whitney Houston team. So none of this from the beginning, from when her show, you know, blew up in the 90s is far fetched. Almost every 90 kids remember that beloved family sitcom Moesha. The series aired from 1996 through 2001 and featured a variety of incredibly popular celebs from the time, including Brandy Norwood, Bernie Mac and Marcus T. Polk. And while the show was incredibly wholesome, fans of conspiracy theories alike believe it was cursed. The cast and crew who were involved in its production. In a span of almost two decades since Moesha went off the air, at least four major cast members have passed away prematurely. Some have brushed it off, believing that it could just be a coincidence, but we know coincidences don't exist in the world that we live in. While others err on the side of superstition and have labeled the unusual pattern the Moesha curse. The list of people who died from the Moesha cast is disturbingly long. Is the pattern started with the death of Merlin Santana, who we just talked about. He passed away in 2002 after getting shot six times while leaving a friend's house at a young age of 26. Next, Lamont Bentley, who played Hakeem Campbell, died in a traffic accident in 2005 when he was only 31 years old. Now, the crazy thing about him dying in a traffic accident, I think it was a one car accident you know i could pull up the official story it was a one car accident and he flew out of that car and he was actually hit about five or six times by other cars which is insane to me and it makes me think about the mysterious death of um short point guard in the nba isaiah thomas his sister died in a one car accident you know slammed into something boom she died it was all pretty weird and i think i talked about that in my um, initiation video. One of those videos I talked about that. Um, there was also another, there was also either a journalist or somebody else in LA who died in a single car crash and it was for sure a sacrifice because the numbers were written all over it. So my point in talking about this is that they sacrifice people sometimes with these one car accidents. You know, they could do whatever they want, you know, kill, kill the brakes in the car. Who knows how they set it up for this person to crash in their car but it has happened over and over and over when it comes to these people that are in Holly weird. A lot of them have been sacrificed in accidents, just one car accidents. You know, not saying it's not possible in the real world, but we know, you know, we know what we're dealing with here. The man was hit five times by other cars, people. And it's actually wow. And then we all know Bernie Mac, he passed away in 2008. Now, you know, this kind of goes back to what we were talking about in Friday because he also played in Friday. And, um, you know, once again, my biggest video on this channel across YouTube is the Bernie Mac video. So, you know, we've already touched on Bernie Mac. Vet Wilson. Now, we talked about her briefly in the Friday video as well. So we know that she died supposedly of cervical cancer 11 years after the show ended in 2012. She was only 48 years old when she passed. So that's two people across both shows. Well, you know, the movie Friday and the show Moesha. Now, obviously, they both had long careers and they played in other things as well um but you know the fact still stands that they played on two very cursed movies and shows in my mind and a lot of people seem to think so as well although it's up for debate some include brandy norwood in the curse because she was involved in a car accident back in 2006 in december of that year that killed a 38 year old mother of two Amid a heavy traffic jam, she the, the mother had accidentally struck the car in front of her, which ultimately caused Brandy to collide with the lady's car. Following the accident and that lady's death, who was a mother of two, Brandy received tremendous backlash and was looped into several lawsuits. As it was said, she supposedly ignored the slowing of traffic and wasn't keeping a safe following distance. So this is that kind of thing where it's, it's like death is always surround around certain people. You know, that spirit of death is following you in a sense. You know, a lot of people talk about that kind of thing. And, and that could have been what I was talking about earlier with Merlin Santana. You know, that could have been what maybe he was thinking of, you know, that he, he didn't necessarily say it, but maybe that, that the spirit of death was actually following him. That's why he said he felt like he was being followed because he felt like, you know, maybe maybe he kind of his spirit was kind of telling him that he was going to die soon. These these deaths don't have, you know, a necessary time limit, you know, just because. You know, the show. 
aired at a certain time, you know, that that show and being a part of whatever they were a part of, that curse can still carry on for the rest of your life. Because we dealing with stuff in the spirit world and we have to always be reminded of that. And not to mention, like to me, to me, Brandy kind of looked like a witch, you know, especially like younger in this little picture right here. She looked like a witch to me. You know what I'm saying? Like this picture right here, all three of them look like witches. It just, it just, in that red, in that background, the way their eyes look, it just giving that vibe off. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I wouldn't doubt this at all. And this stuff has been going on way before we were aware of it, you know, because shit, that's how we even reporting on it today because, you know, it's it's been going on. It's been going on. And a lot of these people end up paying for the things that they've been involved in, you know, even if it's unwillingly, unknowingly, you know, they didn't have any idea that they were participating in a ritual or that this show would have been cursed that certain people had to die from, you know, the, the life that they were given to live by Satan because he's the one giving them all this stuff. You know, this is not coming from God. God allows it, but it's not coming from him. And that's why, you know, some of these people end up dying prematurely dying at a very young age from certain you know it could be sicknesses you know they end up dying they end up being sacrificed because this is what they signed up for at the end of the day most of these people took an oath especially the big names brandy bernie mac merlin santana you know um, bentley all these people i guarantee you took oaths and whether they knew it or not that day was eventually gonna come you know what I'm saying? So, um, you know, I thought, you know, this would be a good video to bring to the channel, you know, just because we were already touching on, you know, cursed movies, cursed shows. So, you know, definitely if y'all want me to cover anything else that y'all feel like, you know, um, th I guess it just kind of goes in the line of cursed shows and cursed movies and things like that, y'all let me know. I said, man, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. Hope y'all having a good week. Um, we got more content on the way, man. Um, and I thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. You know, I appreciate y'all support as always. And with that being said, it's Black Balloon. And I'm going to see y'all soon. I'm out.